Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is a video to help you try to make a cool wing view or any kind of view that you want in X-Plane. I'll basically quickly cover uh, how to set up your own views, which there's been some videos done on that before, so you might just find those suitable. I thought they were good too. Uh, but this also just covers like how to maneuver around so that you can customize your own wing view. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously it would be really cool if we all had the luxury of having this view, the cockpit view, in our in an airplane as we're flying, which many of us will never have of an airliner. Uh, but our next favorite seat typically is sitting over the wing. I personally like sitting behind the trailing edge so that I could see the flaps and ailerons do their thing uh, while at the same time still being able to see the ground below so and I'm sure many people here enjoy that so this will show you actually how to get to that point and uh, and use that so to get familiar with that let's just do a couple of quick uh, brush ups on like how do we actually maneuver around the cockpit in X-Plane now this is the FlyJ Sim 732 model this is an aftermarket like uh, add-on it's an awesome awesome model it's uh, not terribly expensive uh, and what you get for your money it goes above and beyond it's just a great airplane and if you're looking to do something realistic with airliners you can really do it in this airplane so what you usually have in your airplanes now this is a 3d cockpit but it's in 2d panel mode so if I were to let's say this is the, what we call the W view if I wanted to turn my head to the left, I would just to the left of W is Q, and to the right is E. So turning your head to the left is with the Q, and then turning your head to the right is with the E. And you can see how great this panel actually is. I mean, it's just the modeling is tremendous. Uh, they focus their energy mainly on the cockpit. This does not have a modeled aircraft cabin on the inside or anything like that. But uh, if you're like me, uh, well, you'd rather spend your time up here. So. Uh, not sure if they're gonna do one in the future. Maybe they will, but uh, as long as they keep improving this thing, that's that's my main goal, my main interest personally. So, okay, so let's go back to W. Now, let's say we wanted to see the rest of the instruments. You would hit the down arrow, and you could see the HSI and all that stuff, or you could hit the up arrow and see a little bit above. And in this, this is almost like uh, raising your seat up and down, or like kind of like tilting your body up and down, like you know, like as if you were hinged at your back. In your, at your hips and kind of sort of tilting forward and backwards so but you know it's clunky and notice that we can't see over the nose too well can't see over the nose too well at all right so then there's another view in here called 3d cockpit view so if you go to a view go over to views there's 3d cockpit and notice that the keyboard command is shift 9 along with all these other cool views so what I'm gonna do is use the keyboard command and I'm gonna hit so if you're a W view if you hit shift 9 it doesn't look like anything happens. But what we've done is we've essentially released the cockpit. So watch this. Now when I turn my head left and right, it we can do go wherever we want, you know? I can sort of just tap the key, move it over a little bit, or I can hold my key down and slew. And I could position my head anywhere I want. Uh, then if I shift 9 again, it snaps us back here. If I wanted to adjust my height, I could go down or up. And now it's like we're really adjusting the height of the seat. You know, it's like you're grabbing out the release knob and sort of springing up and down. Whoa, 747 just went by. All right, cool. Uh, so that works, right? But then if you notice, like if I hit Shift-9 again, uh, or rather, let me hit the W key and then Shift-9. So, so we're kind of back at the default mode and even though if I move up and down, yeah, now I can see over the instruments, but uh, over the panel, I can see better out that way. Like if I'm in W view, you know, you, you really can't see over the nose too well. And that can be tough when you're taxing or when you're in a flare on landing. It's not really the best view. So being in shift nine or the, the 3D cockpit mode allows you to go up and down, right? Okay. The other cool thing, we're going to see this in a minute. The other cool thing that we can do is tilt our head up with the R key. So the R key tilts your head up. And then you're thinking, well, cool, the key below that is F. Maybe that'll tilt my head down, but no good. The F key, the ASDF keys, A and S rotate the OBS for the NAV1 VOR indicator, and D and F 
rotate the OBS for the Nav2 indicator, uh, VOR indicator. So I personally wanted to pre uh, preserve those buttons. So what I did was I went into settings and you go to joystick and equipment and you choose keys, the tab for keys. And then if you weren't sure what to even look for, well, we knew that the R tilted our head up. So we're gonna scroll down the list until we see on this left side what the letter R is being used for. And continue on, continue. Oh, I think we're here. R, and it says general rot up. That sounds kind of gross. But general rot up basically means general functions rotate up. So you rotate your head up. Then yours probably either has a different key in here for general rot rotate down. Uh, it might have nothing or it might have a different key. It just changes to the letter T because it's the next letter R. At least you have them together. I mean, you could make anything that you want that to do that, basically. But I didn't find the T being used for anything, so uh, at least nothing that I needed, so I made it into this. Awesome, so now we are able to uh, turn our head and tilt our head up and down. Now watch this, I'm gonna come back over here. So now R goes up and T goes down. Cool, I can, yes. I am nodding at you. Okay. And then we can turn left and right. All right, cool. So here's the, the relevance of that. Let's say you wanted to see over the nose better. Uh, well, we could just move our, uh, go to um, 3D cockpit, move our, move our body up, and then tilt your head down a bit. Okay, and now I can see over the nose better. I can see the heading indicator or HSI. And I can see the attitude direction indicator, the attitude indicator essentially, and no problem. If I wanted to keep this view, I would just hit control, hold that down, and on, on, on the numeric keypad of an extended keyboard, you pick any number between zero and nine. So you essentially you have 10 views, uh, which is a lot. Of course, I want more. Uh, once I got used to this feature, I was like, wow, I wish I could program even more than 10. but Basically, the control button, hold it down, and then push one of the buttons, and that'll store it for you. Um, if you don't have an extended keyboard, if you're operating on a small keyboard, there's a way to do that as well, but that's like a different video. I think there's one out there that shows you how to do it, uh, but uh, I'm not going to do that in this one. I might make my own eventually as well. Okay, anyway, so so now the FlyJ Sim came with their own views, so if you choose to customize their views, it'll override the text file that's in the aircraft folder. If I didn't say it already, what's really cool is that whatever views you save for this particular airplane or whatever airplane you're flying will only be for that airplane. If you go into another airplane, then you have the ability to make a whole other set of 10 new views for that airplane because it saves a text file. Uh, it says something like uh, the name of the aircraft underscore uh, pref for preferences dot text. So if you didn't like what you had or it was getting all confusing or you ended up having problems, you can just trash that file. Just don't empty the trash until you're sure that you didn't ruin the rest of the stuff in the airplane. Okay, so what I have is my number one view is like this. I customized the ones that came with Fly JSIM by a little bit. Uh, let's say number three, so it shows me like more of the panel, you know, number two zooms in. Let me just rewind time a little bit, okay. Uh, number five shows me like all the engine instruments. Number four shows me my radios. Number six gives me the co-pilot side. Seven is the beginning of the overhead panel. Eight is like the heart of it. And nine is kind of tilting behind you. So, and then of course, zero is giving me my uh, wing view that I like. All right, so how to get this? Well, before we go there, let's come back into here. And what we also need to do is Let's see, we said we know, so we know we can go up and down, right? With the up and down key. Left and right slides you side to side. We can tilt our head up and we can hit, tilt our head down. We can turn and turn, okay? Uh, the other one that I just need to show you real quick is zooming in and out. Now it's not really zooming. In other words, if you've used x for a while, you probably found that plus zooms in like binoculars and minus zooms back. It's a magnifying effect that occurs in both the panel and the outside world. And that's the problem with it. It's like zooming through binoculars. But if you use the period key, 
now you, it's like you're leaning forward. The outside world barely moved, right? You see that? So this is like leaning forward, leaning backward, and that's really what you want. That also helps you customize your cockpit views, but it's also gonna help us get to where we have to get to save our own custom wing view. So I think we have everything. We have zoom, in, uh, leaning forward and backward. It's also like walking forward and backward. Turning left and right, tilting up and down, sliding side to side, and adjusting our height up and down. I think we're ready to do this. Okay, so we're gonna turn around and we're gonna see the back wall. Now some airplanes, you can walk right through this. You can just go right through it, no problem, through the wall. Other ones, you might have to like find a thing on the door that you click and the door opens. But this airplane lets us go like right through the skin basically, which is kind of cool actually. Uh, so I'm gonna hold the period key down and we're gonna go right through the wall and end up in the cabin that isn't, all right? Now notice as I'm continuing, it's gonna take a, you know just a couple minutes, but as I continue forward, look at that. I'm actually going down a little bit too because I was looking down. It basically follows whichever way your nose is pointed. So we can just tilt our head up, oops, tilt our head up a little bit with the R key and then hit the period key again. And we're gonna go all the way over to uh, the, like toward the trailing edge. That's personally where I would want to be. You could put this anywhere on the airplane. You could. Uh, I saw a person online who uh, put theirs inside the engine. So you were like looking at the tailpipe of the engine. It was kind of funny. You know, just had a random view over there. Excuse me. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting there. We're walking. We're walking. I don't know. It reminds me of a weird scene in a White House uh, tour. Okay. Mm. Engine's getting louder. We must be nearby. Let's check it out. Okay. So now we're like on top of the wing. Now, I personally want to be uh, behind the trailing edge. I could just turn my head and keep walking that way, or I could just keep myself like this and then use the side uh, arrow. The left arrow in this case. And it's now I'm like sliding off to the side or sidestepping. All right, so here we go. We're just about at the trailing edge. Uh, maybe tilt, turn a little bit, right, like that. And then maybe I want to tilt my head down. Oh, tilt my head down so that I can see more of the engine. Uh, oh, but then I notice, like, look at this stuff over here. Maybe I want to, like, come up like that, you know, and then over more. And then maybe t turn myself. You know, you can like make little adjustments based on what you want to see. So this is neat because now I can see my uh, ailerons come up and down. I can see my thrust reversers in action. I can bring the flaps down. Okay. And then what I would do is, let's say we wanted to make sure that we were like at the actual height that you would be at if you were sitting in, in one of the seats, right? Oh. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go to my wing view that I already saved. So let's say you wanted though, to double check like were you at the correct height. So I'm going to like intentionally mess it up on purpose a bit because mine was already adjusted. Okay, so now I'm going to... You notice how I accidentally went and hit W? That'll happen a couple times as you're playing around with this and then you're like, oh, I got to do it all over again. Okay, so here we are. And look, we are actually you know, lower than what you would be as a passenger. You, your head would be in, this, in the window, so we can adjust our height. If we prefer, you don't have to do this. You can be anywhere you want. Okay, just inside the window. I actually like to go in, like, as close as I can to the middle. And I'll show you why. All right, so the cool thing about being in the middle is that now you could freeze this position and, uh, Tilt my head down a little bit. Okay, tilt my head back up. Uh, like that. Save that one. And then maybe I, if I have a spare key that I have, that I haven't used it on other views yet, I could do this side as well. So that's neat. Now you got both sides. You know, you could do like your one and two, or your, you know, one and three. I don't know, whatever makes sense to you, you know, if you choose to do that. So now you have your wing views. Piece of cake takes a little bit of time, play around with it, adjust it, see what works for you, tilt your head up and down, enjoy it, and uh, now you can watch replays from the wing view, from the cockpit view, from the outside view. Really, really cool stuff. So, anyway, and then I'm going to go back into the cockpit, hit the one key, what I had saved for my 
main view or you know hit zero zips me back here hit seven brings me back to the panel you know really neat uh just side benefit you know if you're flying when you fly airplanes with 3d cockpits i know sometimes people were like oh man if 3d cockpit it's hard for me to maneuver around but this makes it much easier like if you have to do this and then tilt down all the time and then find where you are without a thing like track ir that's pretty tough to do you know in zooming in but when you choose to save your presets, now it's like, okay, here I am, I'm flying the airplane. Uh, let me check my radio frequencies. Okay, now I can make my adjustment and then I can go back right over here. Maybe I gotta turn on my landing lights, do that. Check my, uh, you know, I don't know, to see if there's like a warning light on or something, then I can come right back here. So anyway, it makes life a lot easier to, to fly in a 3D cockpit as well. Anyway, hope the video was helpful. Uh, I definitely recommend checking out the 732 by FlyJ Sim as well. Such a great airplane. Uh, it's a great time to be in flight simulation. We're seeing, especially in X plane, you're seeing a lot more stuff coming out these days. And I uh, highly recommend them. And uh, yeah, in general, just uh, cool stuff. So enjoy. Hope this was helpful. And uh, take it easy.